is out of a logging operation. As a, as a forestry best management practice, um, one method of helping to catch um, sediment that is moving off site or in an area that where you think that you might have a problem with some erosion would be to install a silt fence. It is not normally a best management practice that we consider to be optimal in a forestry setting for a number of reasons, but it can be um, a method of stabilizing soil in a temporary manner that can help you on a logging operation. And so today we're going to do a quick little demonstration of how to correctly install a silt fence and uh, pro provide an example and try to cover some of the techniques involved. So the area where we're at now is, a, is an example of a place where we've, we've got a logging operation to cut in. Um, the logger moved off site for a little while and we've got an area with some soil that's moving a little bit. We would normally try to stabilize a place like this maybe with some seed and mulching, but the logger's going to come back and we may have uh, an opportunity here to catch some of the sediment that's going to move in a temporary fashion and keep it on, on site here and try to stabilize this with a silt fence. The, one of the first points that you want to consider when installing a silt fence is that you want to install it completely perpendicular to the slope, um, directly across the area where soil is going to move, whereas with a water bar or turnout, you're trying to direct the flow of water off of the, uh, away from the, the area in an angle. With a silt fence, you're actually trying to catch the sediment. So you want it perfectly perpendicular and directly across the, the flow of the direction of the water and the sediment. So the first thing we're going to try to do is uh, dig a trench to install the bottom of the silt fence into. Um, that normally, according to the BMP manual, needs to be four to six inches deep. So I'm going to try to dig a trench. This is a, uh, a tool that I'm going to try to use, uh, pickaxe, a uh, shovel can be used, um, a, a, a narrow shovel might be another good tool that we can use. A lot of times on a logging operation, the soil is going to be tight, you might have some compaction in a place and it might be really difficult to dig a good trench, so just pick a tool that you think you can use. So, what to make while we're trying to get this, this trench in is be sure and take the time to get it dug in well because the last thing you want to have happen is uh, not put it in right, not get enough weight on the bottom of that material to hold it in place and have it blow out on you later on and then you've got a problem. We're just working on opening this trench up a little bit more, getting it where we can get the bottom of the silt fencing in deep enough to, uh, to hold when we get some sediment moving and catching in this fence like we know is going to happen. With silt fencing, you're, you're catching sediment in a temporary fashion and you've got to make sure that you've got a good plan in place for what you're going to do to more permanently stabilize the site. We want to emphasize this is kind of a temporary measure to to stop some uh, erosion, to catch some sediment until we have time to do something else with it. All right, we've got our uh, trench dug across the area where we're going to install the silt fence. Um, as you can see, we've got between five and seven inches probably here. Uh, trying to keep the bottom of the trench as, as clean out as we can. If you've got any rocks, woody debris, anything like that, you need to try to get it out because you could have an air pocket that could allow some sediment to come underneath that, the bottom of your silt fence and, and cause a blowout right there. Um, we've tr we tried to make sure that we keep the soil that we're pulling out of this trench on the uphill side so that we can use it to pack back in against the bottom of the silt fence once we get it installed. The area where we're doing this demonstration, we have approximately 25 feet across here it took two people maybe 20 minutes or so to dig this trench in some pretty tight clay. Um, so you can see you've got some time involved. Uh, again, we want to reemphasize that the installation of silt fence is kind of a last ditch measure. 
um, possibly something that you might use in a temporary situation. Say you're closing out a logging operation at a time of the year when it might be difficult to get some grass or vegetation established on the site, then you may use the silt fence as a temporary thing. For example, if you close out a logging operation in January, you know you've got two months or so before you can really expect any kind of stand of grass to come back up. Um, you might want to use this to catch some sediment to, in a temporary fashion until you can come back and put your seed and mulch out and, and more permanently stabilize the area. So we've got our trench dug across here. We're ready to roll out our fence. Now, we're going to we're going to start on one end with the stake. Get it out here. One thing to remember, another point is to keep this fence as tight as possible when you're installing your stakes. You want to keep the st the wooden stakes on the downhill side of your trench facing downhill. These need to be driven in really well, real tight, pretty deep. As you can see on this silt fence, we've got 10 or 12 inches of stake past the bottom of the edge of our material and we need to get it driven in maybe as far down as this, this red line on the piece that we have here. So we can make sure that we've got it deep enough to uh, really put some soil up against the bottom of it. I'm going to go ahead and cut this since it's longer than we need. But you can see I'm going to need another stake right here. I've got this driven in pretty well. And I've got plenty of room down here to push my soil back on top of the lower part of this silt fence and really get it um, healed in real well. I've even got the ability to, to turn the bottom of the silt fence back up and towards uphill a little bit so that I can get some soil in here and really help hold it tight. So now that I've got it in place, I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to push this soil back on here and I'm going to firm it up in there and try to really get the bottom of this silt fence and secured real well.
Now you usually won't try to use a silt fence unless you think you're in a place where you have pretty significant potential for some soil to move and catch right here. So this needs to be put in well, deep enough trench. Need to probably pack this dirt just a little bit, firm it up a little bit so that we know that this is gonna be secure. When sediment comes down through here and catches in here, it's gonna collect. This has to be strong enough to hold it. This silt fence that we, that we were able to purchase, the stakes look like they're about seven or eight feet apart. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to come back in here and put another stake in behind and secure it with this to add a little bit more, uh, a little bit more protection from this thing blowing out, a little bit more security. Um, some other things that you could do, you could even come behind this with some bales of straw to help give it more support on the back end. Um, we commonly see places where you've got such an expanse or so many different angles and turns to a, a logging road or a skid trail where you could actually use multiple silt fences in stages. Um, maybe one coming across here, another one over here to catch what comes around one side of this silt fence, something in that nature. Um, just may be the kind of situation where you need to install quite a few of these to, to stabilize an area. This material is pretty strong the way it's woven with this, this uh, plastic but you have to be prepared for a lot of weight to catch in here. We sometimes come back and see places where silt fence has been installed and the, the installer didn't anticipate the amount of, of material that was going to catch and collect in between two of these stakes and it blows out and then you've lost it and you've got a real big issue. All the work that you did was uh, wasted. I'm gonna come back in here and put just a little bit more of this soil that I have removed from the bottom of the trench in here. I've got enough weight on here where I don't think there's any way this is gonna come out from being too loose at the bottom. In summary, to wrap it up, you know, a silt fence can be a good temporary measure to help capture some sediment, keep it on site so that you can buy you a little bit of time. It's not, a, it's not an effective tool to use for permanently closing out a logging operation. It's something to use in a place where you've got a significant problem or you have the potential for a significant problem. Um, as always, we encourage you to call us if you've got, if you need some assistance or guidance on how to use BMPs to close out a forestry operation. We encourage you to use the reference materials that you have, your forestry BMP manual, the pocket guide to um, FPGs and BMPs to help you come up with the decision on the best tool for you to use to um, close out a logging operation or to stabilize a, an area where you've got some concern.